Grace. What am I? I see it. Did you what see am it? I? What am I? Um, 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 uh, crystal ball. It says my future. I'm an eclipse. I'm an eclipse. It hurts my eyes. Gosh. Wait, is it you that hurts my eyes or the eclipse? I don't really. These you hurt like my, me. you hurt my ears. Okay. We should, we should just start this show. You ready? <laughs> we should. Okay. Listen up, Grace. Yeah. I saw the eclipse and its greatness. I would debate. So can we just get on with life on episode 58? I'm Eric Idiot Renner Kosek. And I'm Grace Hot Pants Langheim. Eric is all business in the front of the pack, and I am all about the party in the back. That's right. Business up front and party in the back. Together, we are the Running Mullet. And we are going to talk about every aspect of running, the podium to the DNF and everything in between. If you are a runner, this show is for you. Now sit back, get out your foam roller, and enjoy the party. Hey. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Before I ruffle any feathers, I'm, yeah. I'm just kidding. I, we, I did see the eclipse. It was pretty okay. neat. Lucky yeah. enough, luckily enough, on my back porch, the clouds dispersed enough to where Lauren and I could see it through our sunglasses and our special these things that nice. you know you saw the moon doing its thing. So uh -huh. it was. It's something different, I guess. Yeah, it's something special. Yeah, just like you. Super special. Yeah, just like you. Hey, um, how was your weekend? My weekend was pretty good. What I you always can't oh, what did I do this weekend? I don't know. I ran on Sunday. I did something on Saturday. What did I do on Saturday? What Ray? Oh yeah, Eagle Ten. Yeah, see? Eagle Ten. I set up at Eagle Ten, hung out all all day there. Uh for good part of the day. That was fun. Mm-hmm. Had an athlete do really well at the 25K, Becky yeah. Gwinnett. She yeah. won the 25K. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I got all the winners and the female winners and male winners of each event, if you want to hear them. Hey, yeah, break it down. So we go down it. So yeah. Eagle 10 Trail Challenge, it's it's broken down into a 50K, a 25K, mm -hmm. 25K Rock, and then a 10K. And you have your choice of all of them. This year, because of the deluge of rain we had last week he had to change the course a little bit mm. for the 50k and 25k but he lost like two miles just because couldn't get an aid station in where it needed to be because it was um swampy so what are you typing grace hmm i'm, I'm typing all kinds of fun stuff so anyway let me go through the winners and and stuff real quick so we yeah. can recognize them for the 50k joshua hayes in 441 and Sophie Kotak in 509. Jason Weaver, which is James Weaver's cousin. We both know James oh, Weaver. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, he won the 25K cool. in 238. And, and my girl Rebecca Gwinnett in 319. Um, Robert Phillips run won the 25K Ruck in 313. Liz Milholland in 508. And then the 10K, Andrew Cunningham in 101. And Lindsay Weapon Becker in 126. Cool. Yeah. Those are some speedy times. Congratulations, oh. all the finishers at Eagle, Eagleton. I yeah. heard it was a, a great day. It was a big weekend for races. There was also Buckridge yeah. Burn, um, yeah. which is Jen Henry's race. She's the race director. And I will be having a, um, I'm going to be having a, a Mullet Chronicles episode coming out very soon from Jen Henry. So I'm excited about that one. I was just thinking about your chronicles today. I thought, huh, yeah. Grace hasn't dropped any new ones lately. Oh, I've been a little busy. I know. So Ooh. I'm behind. I'm behind. But I have um I've got good ones lined up. And that's gonna be the next one is uh is from Jen Henry. I heard Buckridge Burn went really well. There was a training weekend. A lot of people went up to World's End. Um, because wow. a lot of people are getting ready for the World's End 100 k That's coming up. It was a good weekend. And I went kayaking. On the squash banana. On the squash banana on the, on the, the great Susky, the Susquehanna River. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Because I have this race, which I told you about, which um, you know all about firsthand, the Canyon Man 100. And it has the first event is a 19 mile kayak, which I have never, I've kayaked once and it was on a lake. So I thought I should probably do that at least one time on a creek. And um, so, so Tessa and I did a 18 mile kayak and we survived. Nice. And, uh, you know, one, one time training, that's enough, right? Are your arms sore at all? Uh, not as much as I thought they would be, but I, I lift pretty often. <laughs> I I'm usually twice a week in the gym doing upper body work. Um, so it wasn't the upper, I was definitely sore yesterday. I thought I would wake up today really sore. Um, but I feel pretty good, but I, I think it's just because of doing a lot of upper body strength training. Yeah, you're swole. I mean, I, I am definitely swole. When you're swole like you, you don't have to worry about being these sore. traps. Yeah, these, these traps can catch a bear. Catch a bear. All right. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a fun, a good weekend. That sounds like a fun adventure you had on. Uh, that was that was Saturday, right? Or was that Saturday? was Sunday. Yeah, oh, that okay. was Sunday. Speaking of adventures, um. We have a great guest on who is gearing up for his next big adventure. You wanna, you wanna intro him? Yeah, I'm gonna bring him on here. Welcome, Jason Karpinski to uh -huh. the Running Mullet. Uh -huh. Jason has uh, he's done quite a few big things. I mean, Black Canyons 100K mm -hmm. completed that. Rimna River 100 Miler, Twisted Branch 100K, Eastern States, Black Forest Ultra. All the big ones that we're all that us local folk on the East Coast are familiar with. Um, he's attempted them, and his next adventure, which is three sleeps away, is um, 200 miler. I guess you, I would be, it would say Pennsylvania's first 200 mile race, right, Jason? Is that how they're billing it? That's the what they're sky, billing it as. Dark yeah. Skies 220. So uh, I apologize, not 200, 220 miles. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, so that's, that starts Thursday morning at 11, right, Jason? No, Thursday night at 11 PM. Thursday night. Oh, oh you didn't, you didn't, I didn't really catch on that. Whoa. That's I'll, gross. Well, that's no problem. You've already done black four starting at midnight. So it's the same thing basically. Yeah. Probably yeah, just a lot time. longer. <laughs> wow. So. We brought you on. I mean, we wanted to talk to you about like, you know, what your, what your strategy is coming into it, what your mm -hmm. thoughts were and, uh, you know, what you've heard leading up to this race and how you're going to attack it. I will say, before you get going, I will say that Arizona, have you guys been following this Arizona monster 300 opening Friday? Of course. Mm -hmm. Jason, has that uh, interested you at all? Uh, not yet. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Got to get through 200 first. Just, just curious. I'm following it for sure because it looks like a fun race to follow. I don't know that I would ever do it. Um, but I really love following other athletes doing amazing distances, and I find, uh, you know, it's inspiring. Even if you don't plan on doing that race, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it has a big following already, so it'll be interesting to see what registration happens on uh, Friday morning. Yeah. So Jason, why did you sign up for it, it? First, is this your first 200? Yeah, this is my first one. First 200. And why did you sign up for it? What, what is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, for years, I've been thinking about Tahoe. Um, okay. Then they kind of changed it up with all the course corrections with fires and, and whatnot. So the mm -hmm. uh, out and back did not appeal to me. Yeah, um, me neither. I'm glad I got yeah. to do that when they did the full circum. Yeah. Um, and then I started looking at Cocodona. Um, really what it came down to was I got sent out to Black Canyons and that kind of made my decision of, okay, I already went west this year. Let me stay close. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot cheaper. Well, it's about a third of the, or two thirds of the price of, of Cocodona. So that was definitely a big draw for myself. Mm -hmm. And then okay. obviously so it's, it's the first MPA. So you got to, you got to do it if it's your home state. Okay. Yeah. Rhoda Smoker, she's she's a big fan of doing these big ones um, first the first year events. Also, it kind of adds a little I don't know a, 
adds something to the race and to the event being first year. I mean, let's face it, stuff mm -hmm. is going to come up and stuff is going to happen um, yeah. that can get, you know, fixed after that first year. So, so doing a first year event, you're never going to really have another one like it, you know, even if the event continues on. So I, I kind of mm -hmm. get it. I like the uniqueness of, of jumping in on a first year event because it's the first year. Yeah, absolutely. So this is 220 miles through, I'm going to call it North central PA starting in Lock Haven, going all the way up through, um, Cherry Springs, Susquehannock Trail System, and looping back down, correct? Correct. Yep. And so, what is, do you have a goal? Uh, two goals in mind. <laughs> uh, you don't have first to for me is, out. yeah, for, no, I'll throw them out there. Uh, first for me is always finish. Um, yep. um, historically, kind of a mid pack runner, front of pack starter. And sometimes a uh, back of pack finisher. Um, so yeah, finish is always my A goal because um, I just enjoy having fun out there. Um, second goal, just so I don't have to spend as much time out there, is a sub one hundred hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how are you, how are you going to accomplish that? I think the biggest thing is you can't go out fast in a race like this. There's no way you can. I mean, I can't. Um, yeah. So I think just that slow, steady, and not really paying attention to numbers quite like you would in even a hundred miler of oh, I'm sticking to this pace. And I mean, you have to keep within a certain realm, obviously, but uh, yeah, just really breaking down and just staying steady through as long as you can. What's the uh, advertised elevation gain for this one? Uh, they advertise just over 40,000 when we got the uh, GPX file. It's it's just under 40,000. So add some bonus miles in there, I'm sure, when we get lost and uh, we'll be over 40. <laughs> okay. Right. Go ahead, Grace. What do you got? Well, I want to back up a little bit. How did you get – when did you register for it? Like how long ago was it? And how did you get ready from that point to now? So I registered – I want to say it was in the summer last year. Okay, that's good. Um, and then to get ready, I figured out how to injure myself and <laughs> way less miles than you should going into this. Sweet. <laughs> that's super yeah. fun. <laughs> yeah, so it's, if you're going to do it, do it hard, I guess. Um, yeah. I got injured at the end of last year, which I was trying to do three 100s, one, one, one 100, three months in a row. Um, okay. Got two out of three um, and then couldn't walk for a couple of weeks. So okay. still coming back from that. Um, I got to join Eric out at Rabid Raccoon, which is a good test. Went pretty well. Nice. Um, so although the miles aren't there, I feel confident that the legs will be there with mm -hmm. a slower pace and it will just become that mental battle that we are all too familiar with. Yeah. Now, so what did you, uh, tell us a little more about your training. Like, did you just do really, really long hikes? Were you looking more for time on feet? Did you keep the speed work in there? Did you do more strength training? Like, What'd you do? I've always been somebody that just wasn't great at putting a plan together. <laughs> so <laughs> um, with the injury, I mean, I didn't run pretty much half of that December and most of January. Um, so my, my miles are since just December are probably averaging less than 20 a week. So there wasn't much of room to do time on feet or speed work or anything. So yeah. the last, I mean, we did rabbit raccoon. So I pushed hard as far long as I could. And then, mm -hmm. um, the last few weeks I've been trying to get a little bit more hill work in adding a little bit of weight on the back. Um, it's really, it hasn't been ideal <laughs> for the mm -hmm. lead up. Um, but I'm, I'm excited for the challenge. Okay. I mean, so how much of this is going to be, how much have you mentally prepared? Let me ask about that. Like <laughs> how much was mental preparation and maybe putting together a good strategy, training your gut, like tell us about mm -hmm. that side of it. Um, I think it's the most I've done is mental strategy more than physical. Um, sure. I know things can change in this, in this, uh, distance change from hundred to two twenty. Um, I'm going to rely on my gut staying pretty solid like it has in the past. Um, obviously you guys stick to not just gels. So I'm going to be mm -hmm. prepping my own food because first year race, I'm sure they're going to do okay, but I'm, you don't know what's going to be out there. Um, there's actually three other 
folks doing the 220 besides myself. Mm -hmm. So they advertise that you might get to an aid station before we do or after we do. Um, mm. So as far as hot food, I don't know what's going to be available at that moment beyond what I can cook myself at an aid station. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mentally it's, it's been just trying to gear myself up to break it down into pieces as big or as small as come that day. Um, it was funny. I was prepping for the uh, podcast and I was thinking of a quote that Mike Tyson said, and then I kind of went down a rabbit hole there and it was, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Yep. Right? And that kind of circled down all the way back to the Duke of Wellington who said, and I'd like this quote even better was strategy ends when conflict begins. So mm. for me, I think that was good because you could have a strategy all day and be 10 miles in and your feet are destroyed. So yep. you're going to have to problem solve. And that's, that's where the fun comes in. Grace, yeah. did, you, did you hear him say that he prepped for the podcast? We should try that sometime. <laughs> we should try that sometime. Although, I don't know. Sometimes you would think that we did prep and we did not. No. You know? I haven't prepped yet. I'm, I'm not a prepper. Nah, we'll talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so, so go, can I throw one in, Grace? Yeah, let's do it. So, Kaylee, Kaylee uh, Frederick has a good question. Mm -hmm. And I this is probably the biggest question that I wanted to ask anyway, because um the the one 200 miler that i completed tahoe 200 it's it's where i lost my marbles because of lack of sleep and i i'll probably never get to experience something something like that again but do you what is your sleep strategy if you have one um for this race it's you can't do the whole thing um without sleep unless your name's courtney the author or something <laughs> yeah i mean I've, I've looked at a few things a lot of the pros who are really good at this distance are really thinking pretty much anybody or nobody can really push past 60 hours efficiently. Um, I don't plan on getting anywhere close to that. Starting at 11 PM, it would make sense in my mind to push for about 27 hours, which gives me 2 AM, maybe get one or two REM cycles of sleep and get up around the sunlight on Saturday. So as far as first sleep bout, I think that might be my first planned sleep. Um, there are 17 aid stations. They say that seven of them will be outfitted for sleep, whether that's a pad and a sleeping bag. We'll kind of see what that works out to be. Um, I mean, I would love to say, hey, I can be consistent and do 60 miles, sleep for six hours and do that for four days straight and kind of get there with plenty of time to spare. So I don't think that's going to be the case. I think I'm going to be too in my head of just get as much as you can in a big chunk first and then see where the day kind of plans out from there. So I haven't really gone past the 36 hour point on my feet. So I don't really want to do that in this race. Gotcha. Have you done anything to prepare yourself for that sleep deprivation? Like, do you, do you already have an idea of how you're probably going to um, go crazy from it? <laughs> like what's going to happen? <laughs> and, and before you answer that, I'd like to add on to her question do you have any pacers or people to help you? Um, so I'll answer Eric's first because it's the quicker answer, I think. Um, I'm going up with no pacers, no crew. Um, so it should be very interesting. I said I'm either going to get to know somebody very well, meaning I'm with somebody in the race for two days, sure. or yeah. I'm going to hate myself by the end of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I've never truly hallucinated. I kind of, as long as it's not a nutritional thing and it's more of sleep mm -hmm. deprivation, Mm -hmm. I'm interested in that happening as yeah. long as I, I would hope it happens up in Heiner where I've been there several times and I can kind of break out of it and know where I am. Yeah. <laughs> not somewhere where I haven't been because they are not marking the course at all. Mm -hmm. um, they said there might be some key turns that they're going to mark, but there's no kind of, uh, Hey, there's flags every half a month. That's not happening. So it's right. all based off the watch and your phone or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. But you have a GPX file then, I assume. We have right? a GPX file. Just, we just got an updated one yesterday. Um, they did some recon, and with um, some of the water that's going through the areas, they didn't want to make us cross anything too high. So everything yeah. should be kind of waist down or knee down. Um, nice. Yeah, so no, no pacers, no crew. And then, Grace, what was your question again? Have you done anything to prepare for the sleep, sleep deprivation? I think beyond just almost 20 years of ultra running experience. I mean, it's obviously okay. different than this, um, but I've hit that wall many times and know that okay. I'm 
pretty good about setting an alarm when you do sleep. If it's a, a dirt nap, make mm-hmm. sure you're facing the way you need to go and hope you don't turn in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, but as far as prep, no, I've done a lot of, I did a year of almost running exclusively after 13 hours of work, kind of get out there mm-hmm. 10 to 12. So I think I'm just relying a lot on hopefully natural ability to make the right decision. Sure. Um, there's a lot of talk about ketone um, ingestion to kind of keep the mind clear. Uh, mm-hmm. That's too scientific for me at this point. So I'm just going <laughs> to go out there and hopefully just have fun the whole time. And you're going to lose it a little bit. I think that's part of the plan. Yeah. yeah. You know, one thing I saw that was interesting on uh, um, what's the new documentary out from Barkley? It's called 17. Uh, yeah, 17. He talks about, um, and it was somebody else yelling. Who told yelling. Yeah. Yes. I, that was the coolest thing that I took from that little, cl- that movie, that little clip was, was that I never, I guess I would say I never considered that. And I was can't what yelling? yelling. So when you start, Oh yeah, I've done that. Bubbles, when you start seeing, um, hallucinating and stuff at that point, not just when you're tired, but I'm sure that helps when you're tired, but when you start feeling like your, your mind, you're losing your mind a little bit, just start yelling. And it, it brings these elite athletes back to their senses a little bit. Mm. I don't yeah. know. It's something really simple to do. So basically they're going through the woods in the middle of nowhere and, it, and just, yeah, just shouting, you know? Oh yeah, I did that. I did that at wild goose. I started yelling at the rain and telling the rain that I was a rain God. But it's something really easy. And I live in the rain. <laughs> something easy and, and that you can do. It doesn't require anything to, yeah. to make you get yourself back and, and keep your keep your stuff together. Yeah. Yeah. I think it can be used to keep yourself awake and also just to, I don't know, deal with whatever is going on. I mean, Jason, you, you talked about this already and and I want to elaborate on some more. I, I heard somebody say, and I don't remember who it was, um, they had said that something is going to go wrong when it comes to this really long stuff, something's going to go wrong. It's all about how you're going to deal with it when it does go wrong. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that's one of those decisions is like, am I, uh, you know, I, I did, um, wild goose 100, which was in a tropical storm. And after 32 hours of constant rain, I was like, <laughs> I was pretty sick of it, but I knew that I couldn't, I couldn't like let that overpower me. So I started yelling at the rain and telling the rain that I was a rain God. And so that's one of those tricks. And you probably have a lot of those tricks too, um, of things will go wrong. How are you going to deal with it when it does go wrong? And that's, that's really, I think a, a really great thing to have up your sleeve, especially if you weren't able to get in all the miles that you wanted to get in um, to help you get over those tough spots. Cause tough spots are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, talk to us a little bit. We have awesome questions coming into the chat. We, um, we are live Mondays. Every Monday at 7.30 live, you can join in the chat. And so we have questions coming in. The logistics of, Marisa says, the logistics of a 200 miler scares me. How did you handle that challenge as compared, or not did you, but how do you plan to handle that challenge as compared to a 100 miler? So what are, talk to us about some of the things that you plan to do differently. So differently, I typically will just, keep moving forward. If my feet feel good, my shoes feel good. I'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. Um, black canyons. I didn't change my shoes or socks the whole time. And we had mud for the first 10 miles to the point where it formed in your toes as you went. So that is one big strategy that I'm going to kind of change up is using socks I've used before or shoes I've used before and try to change at least every 50 miles, depending on what feels good, what doesn't feel good and being okay with changing much earlier than I would before. Um, I anticipate having wet feet more or less from the start. So really making sure every time I do change socks, dry them off, clean them off. Um, And that's going to be a combination of my dry bags. Um, I'm bringing two up and I'm going to figure out along the way, probably the next day here, where do I want to put them? Um, And then I'm planning on carrying a lot with me. So I'll have shoes in one of the dry bags and then mm-hmm. I'll make sure I have two two pairs of socks or so with me at all times. Um, one thing that I've I'm going to try to experiment with out there is 
is really a change of outfits. So whether it's nighttime versus daytime, that mental click over of, mm. okay, we're in day now. This is what we're wearing. Let's keep going. We, we feel mm-hmm. good. We are going to have great weather. Um, a little bit of rain, I think, uh, Thursday and Friday. It should clear out. And then we'll get a little bit Sunday and Monday, I believe. Yeah. Low percentages. So fingers crossed we get none of that. Um, the waterfalls will be enough, I think. Um, mm-hmm. As far as other logistics, I think I've I've really been keying that in towards my kind of hundred logistics in the past, just breaking down, hey, like where do you need to be when? Um, I will be having something laminated, a sheet of paper with aid stations and whatnot that I can quick pull out and whether my mind stays clear enough to do that, we'll see. Um, but really have something that I can keep track of and really at least be something I can go fall back on for, okay, I need to be moving a little bit quicker than now. Mm-hmm. Um, or I need to, I need to be able to slow down, which is probably even more key of knowing, Hey, you're going too fast. Yeah. Um, as Did far you, as your question, uh, how many drop bags, I'm not really sure. I think almost every aid station is allowing a drop bag. Did you, do you, are you using the same hydration vest that you've used for your hundreds and hundred K's or did you, did you purchase a larger one? I did purchase a larger one. Um, so I think I run with, typically I do the Solomon active skin five liter. Um, I knew one, I'm going to be carrying a bladder of water. Um, we're required three liters when we leave the aid stations, give or take. So I'll probably have the full bladder and two bottles at all times with a filter bottle, um, as a backup, just in case I get out there and get stuck and need water. Um, I purchased the active skin 12 liter. Um, so just a lot more capacity, hopefully enough carrying the jacket and socks and everything. So it'll be a learning lesson in how to really pack things down into something that's a little Mm -hmm. bit more comfortable and I have terrible shoulders. So I know that pack is coming on and off and on and off to just reach things. And I have not been running with poles really since Eastern States in Mm. 2022. Um, so I did purchase new poles cause I did the classic leave it out and they get stuck and you can't, uh, telescope them or you can't break them down <laughs> anymore cause they're, they're done. Uh, so new poles, um, there's no way I can do this without poles. There's no way. Yeah. 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 Well, those are going to be necessary. Okay. Um, and what do you, I mean, you mentioned aid stations a little bit, but what, what's really your nutrition plan? Like, do you have calories per hour, carbs per hour? What are you using to plan? Again, I'm terrible with breaking down actual calories. Um, So I'm going to stick to having plenty of gels. I usually do a lot of Mm -hmm. Stroopwafels. But then in my pack, I'm going to carry with me at all times. And I'll have some of my drop bags. I'll just be making some uh, ground chicken with um, rice, and chicken broth, just something that's a little more flavorful, quick, Mm -hmm. uh, quick calories. Um, and I've seen a lot of people actually doing either instant potatoes or they'll Mm -hmm. make potatoes in, in Ziploc bags, something that can pack down, pack down really quick. So I think those are quick ways you can get calories in and it's a little something different. It's not sweet because sweet Mm -hmm. gets old fairly quickly. And then from there it comes in waves. I've really, (laughs) I've, I've also had a lot of ideas on weird things that I've have never really tried and I'm not going to for this race. I thought <laughs> about making uh un or unflavored uh protein powder and putting it in rice. So oh. just sticky calories uh-huh. or or putting chicken in a blender with like beet juice. Oh which would probably turn your stomach, but that sounds it terrible. Might be, good. might be good for a race. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Have you seen okay. um Jason Coop's recipe for rice balls? I have not. It's a good one. Jason Coop's balls. They are, it's rice and then optional scrambled eggs, maple syrup. Is that like uh, what else? Ones, kinda? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I haven't yeah, seen those. Okay, okay. There's a lot of good balls out there. There are. There's lots of them. Lots of different options, but I like um, Jason Coop's recipe. Um, it's really good. Mm. Yeah. What, uh, yeah. So you had mentioned, so I, I think you touched on a little bit about what you, you're required to take with you. What uh, is there anything mm-hmm. that stands out as odd or like it's a pain in the butt for you or is it just the basic stuff? Based off looking at other races, what they require, it's it's not too odd. Um, I mean, I you're going to need that water. But for me, it's it's a pain. 
I like carrying two bottles and if it's a looped course and I feel comfortable, I, I'd rather just carry a bottle in my hand. All right. Um, so just the weight, the weight itself, I think is going to be a pain, uh, but there's no way around that. Um, it's the classic. They, they make sure you have to have an emergency bivy, a whistle, really all the, the stuff that I think a lot of hundreds probably should potentially do. Um, yeah. But definitely the 200, there's no way they shouldn't have you carry that stuff. Yeah. yeah. What I, is I, the, Kaylee asks, what is the actual time cap for this race? How long do you have? Yeah, you have 118 hours. So we start Thursday at 11 p.m. And the final cut is at uh, 9 p.m. on Tuesday. So two days shy of five days or two hours shy of five days. Got How much time did you take off work? Uh, so I work two jobs and then just start a business. So uh, – <laughs> I took off. So are you going to be working while you're out there? Don't no, say I, wish I, had, I okay. wish I had one of those jobs because <laughs> then I wouldn't have to take off work for races. So, uh, I took off Thursday. Um, they want us there between three and seven. We pick up our stuff and then they give us a spot tracker mm -hmm. right before we start. Um, mm -hmm. I don't anticipate being packed with being only four runners are going to be there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I took off Thursday and then I don't go back to work until the 22nd. So I got 11 straight days off, which, That'll be nice. Yeah, that'll be great. It won't give me time for my feet to recover, but that's okay. Yeah. Do you have Do you have post run meal planned out yet? Are you gonna figure that out that out while you're out there? Normally, that would be a crew job. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for me, it really depends on what time I finish. Uh, I live near Reading, Pennsylvania, so it's gonna take uh -huh. me three and a half, four hours to get home. If I finish mm -hmm. at nine p.m. on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm not leaving till Wednesday morning. I'll sleep yeah. in the back of my car. Um, if I finish at my target hour of 100 hours, that puts me at like a 2 a or 2 a.m. finish mm -hmm. on Tuesday. So if that's the case, then I'll get a few hours of sleep and I'll jump right into a stromboli if someone's willing to make it at 8 a.m. Yeah, there we go. So um, there is there any chance? Is there any? Is there any chance there's any tracking for you guys? Or I assume yeah, so they have not sent us the link for the GPS tracking yet, um, but they will have a spot tracker on us, much like many of the uh, like 250, like Cocodona. So it's supposed to ping every seven miles or seven seven minutes, um, and that area is fairly remote, as both of you know. But that that spot tracker should be good enough to kind of keep people in line of where we are. Um, yeah, because we're not gonna have much service out there. <laughs> no, I would just I would love to be able to follow your your adventure myself and mm -hmm. even update on on the Facebook running mm -hmm. uh, group, if possible. So if you find out anything or if you get anything, you can forward to me. Yeah, please do that. Absolutely. So basically, <laughs> there it's you and three other people going on a 220 mile adventure for the first time yep. and you're going, I don't, I don't know. We don't know the other three people. We don't know what kind of crew or pacers they're bringing. It doesn't really matter. But so you, for 220 miles, there's a good chance that you could be the sole finisher of this 220 mile adventure with mm -hmm. no crew and no pacers that okay. my friend is some motivation to keep moving Absolutely. wouldn't you say i mean that's that's pretty big i mean it's not the craziest person out there there's one gentleman i believe he's in his 50s and it is his first ultra marathon period i love it a good start I, if we're gonna I mean, do it, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. that's the person to get to know he's gonna Absolutely. have the most interesting stories yeah i will say there's there's been great communication from the race director um, whether that comes to fruition during the race or not, um, he's already put it out there. We're going to make mistakes. Um, just bear with us. Uh, their whole goal, he said, is to make a, make our journey as successful as possible. Um, if we get, if we see somebody that's not at an aid station and they offer us a drink and a burger, take it. Like, don't, don't try <laughs> to follow the guidelines fully. Like just, we, we want you to finish, which yeah. is it's kind of good to hear. Um, so hopefully that that does follow through during the race and it's ran fairly smooth. 
Yeah. And the big thing is you're going out and you're having a huge adventure in, in the beautiful state of Pennsylvania. And um, I don't know, you, you can't go wrong with that. Wherever you end up, it's, it's going to be beautiful. You're going to have stories on stories. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun time. I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, um, I mentioned it to, sorry. I said, I mentioned it to Eric at Rabbit Raccoon, um, whether he remembers it or not, but my big thing when I'm out there is uh, just reminding myself, like we're the lucky ones. Um, mm. We're doing yeah. what we love. We're we're fortunate enough to be able to do that, be healthy enough to do that. And yeah. if you're not having fun doing that, then it's probably not somebody I want to spend five days with. Yeah, yeah. It's it, we are so lucky to be able to do this stuff, and we do it while we can, you know, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We made it through the eclipse, and um, that was that that was good enough for right now. And the earthquake. That's right. That's right. I don't know where I'm just over the Susquehanna. I'm, you know, just um, straight east of you. And we didn't feel it over here. Did you feel it? I didn't feel it because I stand on like a concrete pad all day. But ah. you know, many people around me felt it. Their windows were rattling. Wind chimes were going. That's wild. Yeah. Man, it's going I'm crazy kind of here on the East Coast. <laughs> All right. So um, Marisa also asked, does the course run through some of the trails you already know? What state parks does it run through? So tell us a little bit about where you're going to end up and and how you're feeling about those areas. Um, most of the trails I have not run. Um, being that I've done Heiner, Eastern States and Black Forest, when I get onto that donut hole trail, I'll feel fairly confident that if I'm mentally aware, I'll, I'll know kind of what's coming my way. Cause I think it does follow mm -hmm. that trail for kind of through that whole Heiner race um, before you kind of make the turn. Um, yeah. And I, what's nice is I do believe those would be the biggest climbs too. I don't think we go up SOB, but we will be going up uh, Humble Hill. So we're going to kind of go up and over the hump back to Heiner, Heiner state park. Nice. So all those trails are, are familiar, even though I haven't been there in a year or two um, mm -hmm. or state parks. I'm not sure. They were trying to make everything come to fruition, and they did not in this aspect. They they were very close, minus some uh, private land agreements, that they were going to have 100% single track from start to finish, uh -huh. which would have been quite unique. I mean, I, you know, go across the road here and there, but I think yeah. they did, based off the way it looks, fairly good job of keeping it all on trail. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That's pretty cool. I mean – uh, some of the some of the road sections, even uh, you know here in Pennsylvania and other states as well. Even if you're on the road, sometimes they can be beautiful too. I mm -hmm. love hitting the road in the middle of some farmland. I don't know. It's it it can be really nice. Don't shake your head at me, Eric. You're you're just you're so positive and oh, you're such a flower girl. Gosh, no. When you run a trail race, you want as much trail as possible. No, you're right. There's some beautiful dirt roads yeah. here. Yeah, I am right. So there. <laughs> I know, but it was a good spot for me to make fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank now, you. It's impressive that they got that they did that much trail for for that that 200 miles. And yeah. like you said, for for them to to sell to get the whole thing on trail, holy moly, that would have been mm -hmm. really good. But you got to expect a little bit mixed in there. And heck, you're gonna. At that point, you're going to be happy to get out in the open a little bit and, you know, run some seven minute miles. <laughs> right? Oh, man. I'll do my best. I can't run a seven minute mile on the track on fresh legs. <laughs> wow. That sounds like a fun adventure for sure. Uh, at least the weather looks like it's going to be half decent. Yeah, it's not going to be cold. That would be nice. Cool. So what's next after this big adventure? I mean, it's your first 200. You're probably going to do some more after this, but would you have anything on your schedule the rest of the year? There's nothing on the schedule the rest of the year. Um, I'm due up to pace or crew a few people at uh, Eastern States and World's End. So I'll kind of be up at those areas. Um, I'm thinking if if no big injuries happen, I'd like to uh, head back to Blues Cruise, get my 10th finish there, and, and kind of rip a fast 50K. Yeah. Um, did you say Blues Cruise? Blues Cruise. 
Here, yeah. I got a question for you because I was looking at your stats. You started out in the running scene by, at least on Ultra Sign Up, all you did was Blues Cruise 50K for like yep. the first seven years of your running yeah. career. It's a great race. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Apparently, that's the one it is. Uber, oh. Uber endurance race that I haven't done. But like, it was just, it's just weird looking at your resume. Like, that's the only thing you have on there for Ultra Sign Up. And it's like seven years straight. Like, dude, give it a rest. <laughs> so I, I will correct you. It is a go to Pacers race, not an Uber endurance. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, yep. Stefan used to be one of the race directors. Um, so I've known him since since I was 15. So that was my first attempt at Blues Cruise was 15 years old. Um, oh. And it's 20 minutes from home. So all through high school and college, it was one of those like, oh, well, that's just the race I do this year. And I just kept doing that. Um, gotcha. So yeah, it was, it's nice, even though it's a trail I can run any given day. Right. No, I get it. Close to home, easy to get to, cheap enough to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, it's such a great race. I, don't, I have not run it yet. Huh? Oh, you need to. I they know. Have a relay this year. Well, yeah, I don't think I would do the, the relay. Oh, no. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I go out there and I've, I've, um, I've gone out there to uh, just hang out and, and uh, uh, cheer people into the finish and meet people at the aid stations. I mean, the aid stations are super close together. I've done the, the naked series. So I've been on the trails before. Um, and it's just, they just treat you like Kings at those aid stations. I tell you what, it's a, a fun, fun, fun event. There's always so many fun people there who come and volunteer every single year. So that's kind of neat. I don't know. I enjoy it. Get to see Jim Blanford every time I go. So yeah, Jimmy. Yeah. Bull run 50 miler just happened this past weekend. That's right. And he is a multi winner of that race. Yeah, not this year, but he had no, to he had to year. share it with somebody else. Brandon Fogarty got it. Yeah, that, I, I got to give a shout out to Brandon Fogarty, my athlete. He won it. Yeah. This, this kid, run. this kid is a young ultra runner, and he has mm -hmm. so much ahead of him. It's insane. So yeah, you keep an eye on Brandon Fogarty for sure. All right, so Jason, we already know what you're up to this weekend. So, Eric, what are your plans this weekend? Um, I got a couple track meets this week. Lauren has track meets. What am I doing this weekend? I don't know. Hopefully keep trying to get my mileage back up. Nothing too exciting. Nice. Okay. I don't think, unless I'm forgetting something. Hey, Jason, before I forget, this is this is going to be your time to shine. You you had told mm -hmm. me that you, uh, you just started your own business. Yep. Why don't you plug it right now and tell us Ooh. what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. So I started a business with a uh, coworker uh, called freedom wellness coaching. Uh, I'll be covering the ultra running or running coaching. And then the business partner, Natalie will be coaching yoga, strength training, nutrition, um, and just overall kind of wellness coaching. So just getting off the ground. It's going to be exciting for years to see where this kind of takes us. And the whole goal for this is to have that freedom of schedule and, and to really, in the future, whether it's 10 years from now, make that our job. Fabulous. Nice. Where can people find you? Uh, freedomwellnesscoaching.com. Uh, it's freedom-wellness-coaching.com or pretty much any social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Fabulous. Find, find Jason Karpinski. Find Freedom Wellness Coaching. Yep. You can, can always reach you. out to me. Yeah. For people with experience and... Um, and also, I don't know. I'm hoping that you come back with hallucination stories, honestly, because so you you need that experience as well. <laughs> if you haven't had it yet, it's weird. It's just weird. So you should you should be done by the time our show goes live on Monday night, right? Right. I mean, that would be great, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at math. I was just doing. It I mean, it's math. possible. It's possible. Right. I'm, my hundred my hundred hour goal would put me at Tuesday morning. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully we have some kind of update from something somewhere by the time we go live and we can let everybody know what's going on. If I had service, I'd go live from the trail. Right. <laughs> if, if you have, do have service, though, let me know on Monday what's, what's going on. I will. I that will. way we can at least update everybody where you're at and how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's going to want to hear it. Well, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. Grace, what are you doing this weekend? 
I'm going to Boston. I'm going oh, to Boston. Yeah. I'm Boston. going to be cheering on Jill Wentz because she Wentz. is headed to Boston. She did the hard work and she qualified and she got in and she is racing on Monday. Okay. So my next question to you is what was her qualifying time? What did uh, she get one to qualify? I, I'm not asking what her age is because. Yeah. Not, I, I don't remember her finish time. I remember her average pace that she hit and that was 835. What's she shooting for for Boston? Uh, she's she's shooting to have a good time. She um is uh she had to take it easy for a little bit. She started to creep toward overuse injury, so she had to back off some and and now she's feeling super strong. Um, but honestly, it's you know, it's not the kind of race or course that you you necessarily go for a PR. You go to have fun and enjoy it and celebrate all the hard work. So that's what she's she's going to do. I think she's still gonna run with her heart, which means she will run hard when she can. Um, but she, I think she's also going to stop and enjoy it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I may tell her if she doesn't watch this show, tell her that I went last year for the purpose of enjoying it. I, I had a, a goal to just finish well, under three, three hours, which isn't, that wasn't that hard for me, but to, not. yeah, no, that's not shut the it. The, the well, point wait, hold on. Hold on. Before you get to your point, I want to pause you. She does listen. So Good. like, do Good. a message straight to Jill. It, Jill, listen to me. I'm looking right in the camera. That race was the funnest race for me I think I've ever done because of the crowd that is there supporting you for 26.2 miles. <clears throat> I mean, I went knowing I was going to have fun, <clears throat> excuse me, but I still, I still knew it was a road marathon yeah, I know it was a big road marathon. I'm not a people person, but those people fired me up so much for every single tenth of a mile of that whole race that I literally sat on the side of the course, you know, where you can high five everybody the whole time with a giant smile on my face. Believe that, like, really, I smiled for 26.2 miles. What did it look like? Can you try? I, I can't replicate it at this point. Yeah, I lost I, it. I think I might have burned out my smiling at that race. Yeah. But it was the best, one of the best experiences of my life because of the people that are there cheering you on. I mean that. Like, it blew me away. Yeah. I can't wait to run around and cheer everybody on. I'm going to have no voice left. It is going to be oh, a blast. I can't wait for Monday's show then. That would be great. You won't talk. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to talk the entire time. I'm going to... I'm just going to um, wait. You're not, just... you're not going to be available Monday night. Are you? I will be available. We're not flying out until Tuesday. So oh. I'll be able to tune in for Ooh. the show. So can she be on the show? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, deal. Yeah. Perfect. She's going to be so pumped and I'm going with my friend Trish as well. And so it's going to be me and Trish running around um, cheering people on. Like, this is what we love to do is I yeah, would we, rather cheer people on than run Boston. We're going to have we, a blast. We want to hear Jill's story, not yours. I know Jill's going to have a great story. She is the kind of runner who just loves running and runs with her heart. And it's, um, so awesome to see her. Yeah. Cool. Well, good. we look forward to the, the story on Monday night, yeah. Jason, <laughs> I hope you sleep good for the next couple of nights. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and good luck to all of the runners headed out, whether you're headed out for 220 miles or um, lots of people headed out to, to Boston on Monday. So good luck to everybody who's heading out this weekend. Yeah. Keep moving, Jason. You'll get there. You. <laughs> One step at a time. Fun. Thanks for everybody tuning in. We'll see you Monday after the big Boston. Have a good night. And have a good week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.